What's up everybody? This is your girl Erica from the Classy Clown Blog. I just had to share this with you. This, It's about 5.20 in the morning here, but I had to break this down because it just touched touched my soul, right? And it's about vulnerability, right? And you would think, oh, this is a business channel. I'm not trying to hear about that. But this is like key in the winning. This is the key in the mindset. This is the key in the winning. This is the key in how you're going to win. So I just want to read this from the holistic psychologist, okay? Vulnerability. It is the willingness to be seen. Lessons from your vulnerability. Your story has power to heal. Number two, criticism is part of being seen and cannot be avoided. Three, portraying any image other than who you are causes self-inflicted stress. Four, community heals. Five, if you show up, so will other people. Six, if you don't show up, don't expect to receive. Seven, the narratives in our mind are not reality. They are the past. And eight, people are triggered by your vulnerability, have their own healing to do. I mean, this is like a word, okay? And I'll break down each one really quickly. This won't be a long video. Uh, one, your story has a power heal. So many times people say, well, don't tell that part of your story or keep that to yourself or keep that private or, oh, you know, maybe you should change your look or change your hair or change how you dress or change how you talk. No, there's some young man, there's some young girl out there, there's somebody who's watching you, watching your story, seeing you win and you resonate with them, right? There's a lot of times on Instagram or YouTube, I don't do it like other people and I'm still winning. And there's power in that because I'm who I am and I share my story and you know I, I share my stories growing up I share my family I share these things because it, there's somebody out there I connect with okay so story is power here. number two criticism is part of being seen and cannot be avoided so yes you know on this channel occasionally I like make fun of Otis the hater or people talking smack or people being you know basically complaining from the cheap seats what are the cheap seats? The cheap seats are someone who's sitting down, observing your life, telling you how you should do it better, even though they don't do nothing. They ain't out here playing dragons. They ain't out here making YouTube videos. They ain't out here trying to get approved for business loans. They ain't out here buying trucks. They ain't out here knocking down doors, but yet they want to tell you how to do something better. That, I mean, that's just, but that cannot be avoided. If you look at even some of the biggest YouTubers, they've got hundreds of comments in the, in the messages of their videos, just knocking them every single day. And that is just something that cannot be avoided. And I think unfortunately in, in our particular community, it's at a heightened, it's like 2X. I don't know why. There's historical reasons why I think why, but we're not gonna go into that. Um, but it cannot be avoided. Anytime you do something different outside the norm, anytime you grow, anytime you you know show who you are, somebody's with a hammer ready to knock you back down. Why? Because that's just life. People don't like when people stand out. People don't like when people do something different. You know, I am very big on, I'm winning my way. And that's the best, that's the best kind of win. So uh, again, criticism is just part of being seen. Uh, Bryn Brown, all these people, when they do these big shows, even they, they get, you know, annoyed by all the negativity and the negative comments, but then they realize that's just part of it. That's part of the game. There's some guy somewhere in his basement angry and he wants to lash out and so he does. So that's how that, that's just life. So three, portraying any image other than who you are causes self-inflicted stress. This is key. So many times I meet, and I'm gonna be honest, women um, who have, you know, changed themselves temporarily to get a guy, to get married, to just rope in somebody. And then eventually, like with anything, you cannot keep up a facade. The real you will come out. And, they, and then I've seen it over and over. People get married in under a year, under nine months, under six months. And eventually that person reverts back to who they were. It causes stress for the couple and for themselves. And so if you're you, you're uniquely you, and let's just say you clean up who you are, you know what I mean? Clothing wise or so much, but there's still some woman or man that finds you attractive even better. Because if you pretend to be someone else, that wears out. And it's exhausting, right? If you ever listen to anybody talk about them pretending to be someone else other than themselves, they'll tell you they were exhausted because you're keeping up a facade. So, okay, there's that. Number four, community heals. 
this is a big thing if you've been watching this channel if you've been seeing this journey i've been stressing that we meet each other offline why not that i don't love youtube not that i don't love facebook not that i don't love the internet because there's something about community there's something about finding like-minded people who are like you uh, think like you and want to uh, meet in person so this this is kind of like i'm very anti um, these groups that kind of tell you to isolate yourself, don't get in relationships, you know, just go hermit, you know, bump them all. Like, no, 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 no. Our, our bodies and our minds are not built for like hermit lifestyle. We're actually built to be in smaller communities. Like, honestly, your brain, um, these studies say that it's like 150 people that you can kind of like keep up with loosely. Like you won't know their intimate life, but you'll know them loosely. And then there's about a 12 people that you can keep up with like their daily schedule their life their whatnot and then about a good three that are like close and very close friends and so community heals a lot of times i see these articles about people not making friends it bothers me greatly because community heals it just does and it's important to hear that see that and like like you need to get in the community period whether you're riding motorcycles whether you're going to church whether you're going to meetup groups community heals you need to be seen and you need to be able to see other people. So that's my two cents on that. Um, and the big thing is, oh, a big thing about the community, people always ask, Erica, you moved to Texas? Oh, your family's not here. You don't know anybody. And I go, yeah, but I ended up joining a church whose single group had like 150 people. And every Friday, two-stepping, every Saturday, two being down the river, every Sunday, church on top of other activities. And it was like a, it was like a, a great opportunity that show community hills it gets you into a city it gets you plugged into an atmosphere and it was just awesome so uh, again you need community number five if you show up so will other people again if you show up as yourself as who you are as what you bring to the table there's somebody else out there that that resonates with look at freaking youtube it's the prime example you'll go on 10 20 other pages and you don't understand why people follow this person but it's not for you to understand. There's some guy or girl that likes that channel and they want to follow it. Do I think YouTube picks winners? Yes, but I also think it, there's still the freedom in the algorithm that if people find you, they find you. That's just what it is. And that's why I'm so big on like, you can still make money with a small channel. Don't get bogged down by that. All right, so if you don't show up, don't expect to receive. Now here's a big one for me. What I think is people expect to um, get love, get jobs, get advancement in their career and do all these things j just cause, right? They, they're not putting in extra work. They're not putting in effort, extra effort, but they have an expectation and that is entitlement. So th that's clearly entitlement doesn't work because you won't get what you want. It's because you didn't show up. So, uh, number seven, the narratives in our mind are not reality. They are our past. There was a, a lot of videos I've been seeing online where I think it was a girl was trying to catch her guy cheating. And, and it just was this, not knocking the guy, he was just a nerdy nice guy. And he was like, I don't understand what is wrong with her. And it's cause she's living a narrative from her past that everybody cheats and everybody treats people bad. And that's sad, that's a sad way to live. You know, that's just in her mind. Bryn Brown has a thing, she says, the story I'm telling myself. So like, I even know people who are very successful, they'll do something they're nervous that people don't like it because the story they're telling themselves is, well, people don't like new ideals or people don't like this thing or people don't like me. And that's sad, but it happens every day. Like people live with these narratives in their mind. And like a lot of times success isn't about, um, you know, I keep saying you need to focus, work on your mindset, work on your mindset, because what's gonna happen is even if I gave you a million dollars today, if you don't improve your mindset, you don't improve who you are, you don't get some kind of counseling, you will revert back to the struggle you're in now. I know it sounds crazy, but we see this every day with millionaires from the lottery. We see it every day with people who um, they get money and they get famous and they start doing drugs and, and, and they don't feel like they deserve the win. This stuff happens every day. People do stuff to sabotage themselves. So the narratives that you tell yourself are very important. You're a winner, you're successful, you're going places. And, and you're doing everything in your power to go in that direction, okay? Number eight, people are triggered by your vulnerability, have their own healing to do. So this is, this is everyday life. Like if somebody doesn't like the way you're living, they don't like how you're doing things, they don't like how you talk, they don't like, I mean like, they don't like how you, your story. Like every day I get somebody like, well Erica, your family's a unicorn. And I'm like, 
No, it's not. I meet other black people. I meet other brown people who have cops for family, who have farm stories, who have are from North Carolina, who are winning, you know. But if all you ever see, again, this is their narrative they're telling themselves is, everybody they know that's black is such struggling and poor and terrible and having a horrible life. Well, then you keep seeing things that reinforce that narrative. Period. You'll keep seeing something to reinforce that narrative. But if you actually look for winners, you actually look for people doing it, what you'll realize very quickly is that people don't do more than bare minimum. So when you start doing more than bare minimum, all of a sudden you're getting every contract closing, you're closing on multiple trucks, you're closing on multiple rental properties because most people don't go past bare minimum. And if they do, then you see them winning as a wholesaler, you see them winning as a whatever, you see them winning as a contract flipper because they put in more than the bare minimum. So again, people are triggered by that. They have to heal themselves, right? Like. I remember like, I, you know, I got bullied young, younger years in high school and in middle school. And my mom's like, that, that kid has their own problems. There's something wrong with them that they think they can kind of attack you. And that's just a way people like attack you to kind of mask their own problems. That shit happens to me even as an adult, y'all. Like people will attack me and I'm like, what is happening? They're just triggered by you by everything you do, right? By, by you just being you. So in some small ways, when people say I got haters, you know, I laugh about it, but some people do have hate, legit haters who just hate that this person's happy and winning. So um, that was the eight things on vulnerability, but again, I'll say it one more time. Number one, your story has the power to heal. Number two, criticism is a part of being seen and cannot be avoided. Number three, portraying any image other than who you are causes self-inflicted stress. Number four, community heals. Number five, if you show up, so will other people. If you don't show up, don't expect to receive. Number seven, the narratives in our mind are not reality. They are our past. People triggered by your vulnerability have their own healing to do. So that was the word of the day. I had to share that with y'all. That was like in my soul. So anyway, you guys, um, having a blast in our journey, having a blast at this mastermind. And I'm very blessed that people showed up to hear us talk. Love it. So, all right, you guys, this is your girl, Erica, Classy Clown Blog. See you later.